back in the year 1912, the world of science was on the verge of a revolution, and that revolution was quantum mechanics, which is a kind of physics that deals with really weird things. And Bioshock Infinite is also full of really weird things. Coincidence? No. At the start of the 20th century, a German scientist called Max Planck figured out that all energy comes in tiny little packets, and that's where all quantum mechanics starts, and that justifies the expense of an all but forgotten physics degree. Totally worth it, Mum and Dad. Anyway, these tiny little packets are called quanta, which is why they call it quantum theory, and they mean that at a very small scale, the universe is made of counterintuitive weirdness. You alter reality by observing it, woo. This electron is a wave and a particle at the same time. Uh, you need quantum theory to understand everyday ordinary things like microchips and lasers. But out of that bubbling cauldron of quantum weirdness, we also get some bizarro phenomena not totally unlike what we see in Bioshock Infinite. And I did get around to the game you came here to see. Rosalind Lutess is the prim lady physicist in Bioshock Infinite. They, well at least she, invented the technology that allows the city to float. Giant balloons. Quantum particles. Suspended in space-time at a fixed height. So, not giant balloons? The way Columbia hovers at a fixed distance above the sod and below looks a lot like a quantum phenomenon called flux pinning. In flux pinning, a superconductor hovers, is pinned in space, above a magnet um, by the bits of magnetic field passing through it. Flux pinning is also known as quantum levitation, but Rosalind Lutess doesn't like that term. Colleagues called my Lutess field quantum levitation, but in fact it was nothing of the sort. Magicians levitate. My atom simply failed to fall. But you say tomato, I say tomato quantum levitation, quantum atoms. So I'm going to call this a case of interdimensional semantics. It's quantum levitation. Technically, to make it work, you would need Columbia to be on a giant superconducting plate, maybe, and America would have to install magnetic tracks all over the continent, uh, and everything would have to be in a giant liquid nitrogen bath to keep it cool. But otherwise, uh, the theory is sound. One of the ways to understand the quantum nature of the universe is called many worlds interpretation, uh, which says there are many worlds, uh, maybe even an infinite number of worlds. In this interpretation, we live in one universe among many, many universes, each one created by uh, branching off at the alternative outcome for a quantum event. Or to put it symbolically, you flip a coin in this universe and it comes up heads, and you flip it in another universe and it came up tails. That's one idiot. And in one universe, when you flip the coin a hundred times, it came up heads a hundred times. Told you. Mm -hmm. I never find that as satisfying as I'd imagined. Chin up. There's always next time. I suppose there is. In Bioshock Infinite, it looks like Elizabeth can use her quantum superpower to reach into uh, other universes parallel to her own. The body's gone. It was never here. It's another Columbia. A different Columbia. The same point. A different perspective. And then at the end of the game, she can see along all the branching paths to all possible outcomes um, in all possible worlds. What are all these lighthouses? Why are we... Who are... Constants and variables. The Many Worlds interpretation was popularised in the 60s and we have it to thank for all kinds of classic science fiction. And also sliders. I love you, Jerry. Before we had the Many Worlds interpretation in the 60s, back in the 20s we had the Copenhagen interpretation which was based on the work of guys like Heisenberg and Bohr. The Copenhagen interpretation says that a quantum particle doesn't exist objectively in one state or another um, but it exists in all possible states as a set of probabilities. And then when you observe that particle, all of those possible potential states collapse into one actual, real, measured state. The Schrodinger's cat thought experiment extrapolates from that tiny quantum scale uh, into an everyday scale, the size of a cat. In 1935, an Austrian physicist called Schrodinger said, hey, what if I made a cat death machine? No, wait, hear me out. I put my cat in a box where he's killed, or not killed, he might be totally fine, by poison, depending on whether or not a trigger mechanism is tripped by a process which is governed by these quantum mechanics. Until I crack the machine open, the cat is both dead and alive, because he exists in both possible states at the same time. Bioshock Infinite plays with this concept when Elizabeth nips into the universe next door and encounters some people that Booker already killed in the original universe. These men. I killed them. They were dead. 
Not in this world. Somehow Elizabeth messing with the natural order of things causes them to exist in a superposition of states, both dead and alive at the same time, like Schrodinger's cat. It also looks like Bioshock Infinite is toying with the same idea with the uh, infusion bottle pickups, um, which exist as a superposition of health, salt and shield until you observe it um, by picking one of those things. In 1935, Einstein and his two buddies, Podolsky and Rosen, uh, were also thinking about quantum mechanics. According to the theory, they said, you should be able to take two particles and make them interact in such a way that when you separate them, their quantum states are entangled, so that however far you separate them, even if you fly one of them to the other end of the galaxy or whatever, um, they still influence each other. The signal between the two particles travels really, really fast, maybe even reaching the other particle instantaneously, which would mean travel faster than the speed of light. This seemed to contradict relativity, which says that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. Einstein came up with relativity, so he was all like, nope. Still, quantum entanglement is real. It's a real thing. You can do real experiments with it and not just imaginary experiments with dead cats. In Bioshock Infinite, Rosalind Lutess uses quantum entanglement to communicate with her multiverse twin, Robert. The Lutess field entangled my quantum atom with waves of light, allowing for safe measurement. Sound familiar, brother? That's because you were measuring precisely the same atom from a neighboring world. We used the universe as a telegraph. Switching the field on or off became dots and dashes. Dreadfully slow. But now you and I could whisper through the wall. There we go, all the big science from Bioshock Infinite. What about time travel? <sighs> Okay, time travel. Bioshock Infinite um, kind of conflates the idea of time travel and interdimensional travel, which is fine, uh, because Rapture isn't around in 1912, but hey, it's, it's there in the game. Our best science match here is probably wormholes, which Einstein probably would approve of because they pop out of the theory of relativity rather than quantum mechanics again. They're theoretical tunnels, bridges, if you like, in space-time that link one point in space and time to another point in space and time, so you could use them for time travel in theory but no one's ever seen a wormhole. Still, Elizabeth Tears could also be wormholes and that's how they use them for traveling through time. Okay? Yeah, all right. There you go, that's the mind-blowing science of Bioshock Infinite that also is kind of real science in the real world. Something, I don't know. And, um... <laughs> what? Jane, is this is this the right is this correct science? <laughs>